Good evening. I'm Ed Merrill. The program is person to person. And again tonight, we're going to follow our live camera on a couple of informal visits. I'm not quite sure how to introduce Groucho Marx. Indeed, it would be superfluous to attempt it because all of you have seen him. I may say that he is one of five brothers. His father was a tailor. He began as a single with Gus Edwards. Then with his brothers, he made some 18 movies before they retired in 1941. Groucho has subsequently become a great star on television. Most of you know his program, You Bet Your Life, which he does for DeSoto. Groucho lives in this white stucco, red tiled Mediterranean type house, about half a block from the famous Sunset Boulevard in B Beverly Hills. The sidewalk is lined with palm trees. Directly behind Groucho lives Hollywood makeup man, Max Factor, and down the same block, Foothill Road, live the Van Johnsons. Van's little girl and Groucho's daughter, Melinda, are playmates. But now, switching along the coaxial cable to California, let's drop in on the Marks household. You must be Melinda, aren't you? Yes. How old are you, Melinda? Seven and a half. Aha, uh -huh. I have a little boy just eight. Uh, where's your daddy? He, he's upstairs. Uh, before he comes down, tell me, Melinda, uh, do you think your daddy's funny? Do you? Yes. What's he said uh, funny lately? Well, he said he knew a goat that didn't have any nose, and I said, well, how does he smell? And Daddy said he smells awful. <laughs> what, what's that noise? That must be Daddy coming down on the inclinator. On the what? Inclinator. On the inclinator. <laughs> Hi. Good evening, Mr. Mark, sir. How are you, Eddie? All right, how are you? You know my daughter, huh? I have indeed. She tells me you're a funny man. Well, uh, she can get an argument on that. <laughs> Did you... Groucho, Groucho, I've always wanted to know uh, what prompted you to become a comedian. Well, I tell you, I originally wanted to be a doctor. Uh, I had another comedian, and he was making $250 a week. And all the doctors I knew around that time were making around 18 So I decided to skip the Hippocratic Oath and get right into show business. That was Al Sheen of Gallagher and Sheen, Sheen, wasn't it? Al Sheen of Gallagher and Sheen, yes. That was my mother's brother. Well, uh, Groucho, you comedian. and your brothers, you and your brothers must have been quite a picnic for your mother. I'm not picking you up, Ed. <laughs> well, <laughs> let, let me, uh... Can tell go, tomorrow a joke or anything? Yes. Go ahead, you? Melinda. Did you get a laugh out of it? Yeah. Huh? Did he get a laugh yeah. out of it? Well, let's get out of here, huh? <laughs> Shall we go into the pool room? This is where I bring up my daughter in the pool room, huh? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Groucho. I can't go in the pool room yet. Uh, there are people shooting in there. Groucho, I wanted to pry into your family secrets a little. Uh, oh. Why, why have we never heard any talk from uh, your brother Harpo? Well, uh, Ed, uh, Harpo never had anything to say worth listening to. Well, well maybe... strangely enough, when we were in Vaudeville, he never spoke. But now that he's kind of on the sidelines and, uh, you know, he's in television now, now when I go to a party, he does uh, all the talking and we all sit mute. And well, he talks very well, too. Well, I... I... 30 years of pent-up emotion, I imagine. I, I think in view of your attack upon him, we may have to give him equal time to answer. <laughs> uh, Groucho, uh, what's the best advice you ever received from your parents? Well, uh, my father told me to stay away from my brothers. And, uh, <laughs> my mother told my brothers to stay away from me. <laughs> of course, we, this didn't work out because we were pretty successful working together. And oddly enough, we're still very good friends. We see each other all the time. And we shoot pool, pill pool, and we're, we're terrific rivals on the pool table. Of course, Chico is the best because he spent most of his youth in the pool room. As a matter of fact, in the old days when we used to play in Vaudeville, we never went to a hotel from the railroad station. We went right to a pool room and started shooting pool and left our suitcases there. And then later on in the evening, we'd start looking for a hotel. <laughs> and we made a very good living doing this. We were doing better in the pool room than we were in the Vaudeville theater. <laughs> Groucho, I've been noticing that picture behind you there. Uh, is that the Four Marx Brothers? Yes, that was done by John Decker in one of his more temperate moments. <laughs> That's, uh, that's supposed to be uh, out of Rembrandt, I think by Native Dancer. 
It's quite impressive, though, and uh, since I got it for nothing, I revere this painting. <laughs> Groucho, you're something of a painter yourself, aren't you? Well, I've done a little painting. I did the uh, garage <laughs> and uh, a couple of the chairs in the breakfast room. But, no, I did a painting last year for some benefit, and uh, I sent him a painting. I liked it so much, I did a replica of it myself. And, Ed, yes. I'd like you to meet uh, Nettie. Good evening, Nettie. Cook. This is my cook, Nettie. Yes. And this is Sarah, who does takes care of the whole upstairs, and, and they both of them take care of me, and very well, too. Nettie is slowly poisoning me, but that's another story that I don't want to go into. Now, well, you, is... you, I noticed you wouldn't give me a chance to question Nettie on that, as to uh, what she feeds you. No, I swore on Nettie to see. <laughs> the cat, by the way, shoots a very good camera pool. I don't know whether you can see it. And yes. here's the picture that I painted, uh, Ed. Uh-huh. And this is a picture of DeRocher and myself. I was his mascot last year, you know. Yeah. You know, they finished 37 games out of first place. And I got a telegram from Leo the other day, and he asked me, please, not to be his mascot this year. Are so, you any uh, good on the pool table, Groucho? Well, I'm not good on the pool table, but I'm pretty fair around the pool table, Ed. I knew this was a mistake. <laughs> uh, well, it always is. I'd be happy to shoot off a few balls for you, and I might even shoot the cat into a side pocket. <laughs> The eight ball in the corner. No, the eight ball in the corner. Well, that's quite a trick. You wouldn't take it in the side? <laughs> yes. Okay, I'll try it in the corner. This is sheer luck. It may go in on a kiss. No, I missed. Try it again. Well, I won't try the same shot. I'll look for a sucker shot this time, Ed. <laughs> in lieu of the sucker. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Here's the whole nation seeing the way I'm playing pool. I shouldn't have revealed myself. I better go for short shots. I'm at the age where I'm not so good on the long shot anymore. Now, do you want the cat in the corner? Yeah, careful of the cat, now. <laughs> no, the cat's in the way. It's an obstruction that I can't overcome. That's one of the most well, tolerant... That's one of the most tolerant cats I've ever seen. He's pretty cute. You know, it's almost a dog, this cat. I never saw a cat that was quite as patient as I could see the way my daughter lambates his cat around and pulls him by the tail and everything, it's just wonderful, right? You can, you can do anything. It's really two men inside of their skin. This isn't really a cat. Here, you take him, huh? <laughs> well, now you've seen the pool room, you've seen the artwork. And over here we have Gable and Jolson and Hope and uh, Peabody Award and all the stars from CBS and NBC both. I'm going to be impartial about this. <laughs> now we, I'm going to sing a song for you with my daughter which is something she does very well. She's real talented. see Melinda maybe next summer? Well, I'd be glad to have him come out here. Is he, uh, does he have any money? Well, he's got money enough to buy a bicycle. Why don't we let Melinda decide? Well, all right. Let him get a tandem, and maybe we can work out some kind of an arrangement. <laughs> I'd be happy to have uh, somebody around here, a suitor, a prospective suitor who is loaded with money. Uh, now, Grou Groucho, occasionally the uh, skeptics say that your television and radio show is not ad-lib. Is that right? Well, that, that's not true. I've been ad-libbing all my life, Ed. I don't know why I should stop just because I've been on a quiz show. Of course, we do have some preparation. If we have a governor on, or a mayor, or a chief of police, or a man who broke the sound barrier for Douglas as an air pilot or something, then we, we usually have some preparation for him. But from the people we pick out of the audience, we have none. And I want to say here now that I never see the contestants before I meet them at the mic. 
and I've been doing that for seven years. The first two weeks I met the contestants and I found out it didn't work out, it inhibited me, and I find out I work much better and more successfully if I don't know what they look like. Uh, Groucho, do you have more fun doing television than you did uh, doing movies? Oh, much more fun. To begin, you don't have to get up early in the morning. I get on the Davy at uh, 7 o'clock at night and have dinner, and I go in the theater at 8, and I do the show at 8.30, and I'm home at 10. But I want to ask you about this ad-libbing, Ed. Why don't you and I try it? Oh, no, this is not fair. I mean, that's, uh, go ahead, though. <laughs> well, we could try it. It's just a little bit, you know. But just let's say that, I, that you were a contestant on, I say, what is your name? Uh, Murrow. Murrow. Ed Murrow? Yes. And uh, are you married? Yes. And uh, how did you meet your wife, Ed? I met her on a train. Well, were you both on the same train? Uh, so far as I remember, yes. Was this uh, a sleeper? No. This was a day coach? Yes. And you were sitting opposite each other? Yes. Well, how did you happen to meet her? Um, did you ogle her? Yes. Oh, you did? <laughs> Well, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You know, the, you're not supposed to pick up strange women on a train. And how did your wife react to this? Um, favorably. Favorably, huh? Well, what did she say? What, what was your opening words to her? Um, I can't remember, and if I did, I wouldn't tell you. I see. <laughs> well, you're not going to make a very good contestant. And there goes your chance to win $350, Ed. <laughs> that you could have given to your daughter, that she might, he might have given to my daughter that your son might have given to my daughter and we could have been enormously wealthy on DeSoto's money. Uh, Groucho. Yeah. <laughs> I'm told that you once used to shop in supermarkets, is that right? I did, until I became so conspicuous that uh, I decided, I was getting embarrassed. It's very difficult to steal a can of tomatoes when the people recognize you. <laughs> I used to, in the old days, I used to be able to walk out of the store with two or three cans of vegetables and fruit, canned fruit, but uh, now they all know who I am, and I hear all kinds of imprecations now. They say, oh, look at him. All the money he makes is out there shopping for himself. Why doesn't he get somebody to get down and do the shopping for him? <laughs> so I, uh, I'm i more sensitive and more thin-skinned than, uh, than is evident. So I finally quit all that and decided that uh, I would order by telephone. It's unsatisfactory and more expensive, but I have no alternative. <laughs> it's a tragic state of affairs, Ed. Uh, Groucho, do you like to putter about the house at all? Well, I don't have a putter in the house. I have a three iron and a... I knew this was a mistake. <laughs> What's that? Go no, ahead. I'm, yes, I'm just I listening. <laughs> yes, I'm one of those uh, parentally incompetent mechanics and technicians that does everything, does it badly, but uh, enjoy doing it. I always have a notion I'm going to save money if I don't send for a plumber until the whole place is flooded, <laughs> which is usually about a 30 minutes after I start tinkering with everything. Well, but I any... do a little gardening, Ed. <clears throat> do you have anything to show for your efforts? Yes, I have some blisters. <laughs> and I have two or three ruined carpets in the house and my neglect and, and not sending for a plumber. But I do farming in the outside. You know, I'm a frustrated farmer, actually. And that comes from years in Vaudeville, I think, Ed, when I lived on trains most of the time and bum hotels. And I always felt that this would be a kind of an Elysian field if I got to have that South 40 in Dakota. Mm -hmm. Or, uh, you know, raise wheat. I didn't know we were going to have dust storms this year out there, though. And I always wanted to have a farm. I had no knowledge of it, no technical knowledge of any kind. But I always thought it'd be great to ride around on the 40, you know, on a horse and look at the cattle and the swine and the chickens and poultry. But here I am incarcerated in Beverly Hills in this lowly little dungeon. And this is all I have to show for my efforts. This is the swimming pool, Ed. Uh-huh. Can you see it? Yes, I can. Yes, well, uh, you know, I lived there 22 years before I put it in a pool. I always had the water, but this year I put the concrete around it. <laughs> and this is the swing, Ed. Yeah? And they say, uh, if you ain't got that, uh, you ain't got a thing, if you ain't got that swing, so I had one installed. Where do you raise the coffee, Groucho? I wish I could raise coffee. I can't raise coffee here. I raise uh, oranges, tangerines, and uh, these are earthworms over here, Ed. This is very interesting. You know, this is a compost, and it's full of earthworms, and I put all kinds of garbage and ashes and stuff on here, and that's what the earthworms eat. And then I take the earthworms with a pitchfork and put them around the base of the trees, and it's far superior to any kind of a commercial uh, fertilizer that you could possibly get. And the trees are just doing wonderfully since I had that. These are figs. Yeah. And these are all rose bushes in the back, and these are loquats. This is a Japanese fruit. And these are lemon trees, and... Uh, 
Oh, I have some more peach trees on the other side of the house that you can't see from here. Well, Groucho... But you can smell the orange blossoms. You can't smell them from there, can you, Ed? Almost. How long since you smelled orange blossoms, Ed? Much too long. Oh, I mean, were you back on the train then? <laughs> Did you have the orange blossoms with you? You won't tell me what you said to your girl at that time, huh? No, but Groucho, uh, uh, according to your own testimony, you have lived a pretty full life. What, uh, what would you like to see in the rest of it? Well, what I'd like to see, Ed, I would like to see the world come to a stage where each nation could have a chance to choose its own destiny and uh, decide what they want to do with their, not only their country, but with their lives. And if we could have peace on earth and goodwill to all men, not only the week around Christmas, but all year around, I think I could uh, knock off and feel satisfied that I'd seen the beginning of a new and happy world. Well, Groucho, thank you very much for letting us come and visit you out in Hollywood this evening. Well, it was a pleasure, Ed, and I hope you send me something, even if it's only a DeSoto. <laughs> we'll send you some gasoline for it. <laughs> thank you very much, Groucho. Good night, Ed. Good night.